All right, guys, I haven't tried this yet. So let's see if we can start the dryer with the LG battery. Well, my camera's dirty, but it worked. Wow, let's take a look at the graph. I gotta say, the Solar couldn't do this. All right, so this is my load testing setup here. I have, well, this is all just temporary, but I wanted to get this up and running. So I got the E-gauge down here. I have two current transformers hooked up to it. And then I have them on the output L1 and L2, or L1 and L2. Um, then I just have a breaker in here that I'm powering the E-gauge off of. Um, the one up there is the battery breaker. Voltage, frequency, and amperage readings, uh, or uh, wattage readings really, on L1 and L2. Uh, and you'll be able to see those in the graph. Um, just trying to see, you know, what the unbalanced load can be on these things. Uh, what the, the overall load can be. Um, so, here we go. So right now the dishwasher is running, the water heater is running, the heat pump's running. There's a bunch of stuff running. Um, so you can see we're pulling about 5,100 watts. I got a double toaster over here. So let's do on the blue line, which I believe is L1, um, up to 6,000. There we go up to 6800 that's decent holding at 6800 let's turn the coffee maker on same same leg we're at 7700 78 I'm gonna turn that off because it's gonna trip all right let's try this microwave again we're at uh 1100 watts almost 1200 watts, but it very balanced load on L1 and L2 oh, That's the fan microwaves in rough shape, too. Let's try it here All right, well that was a minute So that was pretty good. I'm impressed uh, let's see if we can start the compressor. It's cold out here. All right, here's my compressor. It's kind of stuffed in a corner here, but it's a decent sized one. Old Husky. It did it. Awesome. One more time. All right, well, we were down at about 7%. I ran the toasters again, and I'm getting a 152 fault on the battery. Probably means it's low or something. And there's no grid yet because it's still off. Coming over to the smart energy box. It's off. Okay. So the thing's shut down at about 7%. All right, what I'm gonna try to do now is push the black start button for six seconds. Six. Nothing. I'll have to look up what 152 fault means. Let me turn the battery off. Okay, I just heard the contactor click in there. Turn it on. Okay, it doesn't look like anything's coming on. So now let's try the black start again. Okay, there we go, 6%. So the house can switch over to it. Let's see. Hmm. 
Nothing. Oh, there we go, now it's coming online. And it looks like we are back on the battery. So the black start did work. That's pretty cool. Awesome. So the way I'm running this right now, I'm running it through my other battery system. So if this shuts down, the other battery system takes over. Uh, so I don't actually lose power to the house. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Awesome. And I'm getting uh, warnings now, I have been since about 30%, that the state of charge is very low. So now we're at about 6%. Um, I wonder how long it'll stay on for. You know, I think the reason it shut off is uh, I, was, I was running the toaster uh, just to see uh, if it could still do, you know, the, the max output. Um, and it looks like it probably can't uh, when it gets down like below 10%. Um, so that, that could have been the reason that it shut off. All right, so back up below SOC. Looks like it may have restarted uh, on its own in theory. Um, that's a fault over power. Let's see, was that at the same time? Yeah, it was at the same time. DSG over power and then back up low. So yeah, it's it's getting down. It's at like 6% right now. So I think it's kind of limited in the amount of power it can output when it gets down that low. Well, down to 5% now. I just heard the fridge kick on, uh, the big basement fridge that's got a decent sized compressor startup. Um, so this thing is still going. All right, so now the battery itself is just flashing low, low. <laughs> it's low. I haven't heard the fans kick on yet at all. It's a little warm back here, but uh, no fans. So, it's not happy. It's almost dead. Alright. 2%. It stopped providing power to the house. The battery is still on. But it quit. Uh, quit outputting power. So I'm going to go turn the grid back on now and let's see what happens. I think this is as low as we're going to get. I think we're going to get down to 2% and that's it because uh, it, didn't, it didn't do what it did before where it shut down. It basically just, uh, the battery's still on, but it just stopped providing power to the house. We got the trusty old XW Pro taking over. So... This thing, uh, it's kind of wired in series, I guess, with the other system. Um, so if that shuts power down to the house, it shuts power down to this first, and this takes over. So let's go turn the grid on. All right, let's see here. Flip that on. Okay, there we go, 2%. Looked like it switched the house back over. Let's go take a look inside. Okay, so powering the house, charging the battery at 5.4. Perfect. All right, well, we finally got a sunny day and the panels are clear. So I'm testing uh, the solar uh, in off grid mode. We got 3.9 kW coming in. House is using two and charging the battery at 1.9. And you can see the uh, exclamation point on the grid there means it's dead. Um, I also got the battery down pretty low. I set the reserve at 10%, uh, which you can see over here. And uh, so let's see how it does today. Okay, so here are a couple of screenshots of the frequency uh, that the uh, battery is putting out. Uh, and when the power goes above 5.4 kW uh, of charging into the battery, um, the frequency starts slowly ramping up in an attempt to slow down the solar edge inverter. Um, you can see right here it's at 60 hertz. Um, but also when the battery gets above 90%, uh, it starts uh, ramping up the frequency as well. And that's in an effort to curtail the solar production. Um, I don't have my solar edge inverter set up properly apparently. Um, so it just shuts off when it gets to about 60.1 hertz. Um, but, uh, it's very cool that it has this ramping feature, uh, that allows it to curtail solar inverters. I just need to get the programming right on the solar inverter. 
Alright guys, I'm going to try turning the dryer on just one more time. It just finished the cycle and uh, did not shut the battery down. Did not shut the battery down at all. Let's watch the lights when I turn this on. Barely blink. That's a 5.5 kW load that starts up right there. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so we are running the dryer here, uh, and what we're going to try to do is turn on a toaster. We got one going there, and then we're going to turn on another one. I'm basically just trying to overload this thing at this point. Um, so we're running almost 4 kW, and now we're above 4.5. And you can see that the graph starts getting a little bit wiggly there. Um, the blue and red lines are kind of starting to, to jump up and down a little bit. Um, and so here we go. And now it's shut off. You see the, the graph stopped moving. So about four and a half kW is the limit per leg. Um, I've had it up above uh, 7,500 but getting that kind of load on uh, both phases equally uh, is pretty difficult. So overall, great. And I also just confirmed that that was a L1 overload. Uh, so it just basically went over 4,500 on L1 and overloaded. And the battery restarts right away. Uh, it's less than 10 seconds, probably about seven or eight seconds. Um, and it just restarts. So right now it's telling me that I have 23 hours left of uh of battery based on the current usage and that changes pretty rapidly depending on uh how much power you're pulling all right well thanks for watching guys uh if you have any questions please leave them below and uh don't forget to give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and uh catch you on the next one well i found out that it also powers my sump pump that's a good thing